Welcome to Crystals in Breathing. My name is Eva and I'm the founder of Violets in Bloom and Alchemic Wellness, which is a healing and holistic website. This is Bethany. Hi everyone, I'm Bethany and I do quantum healing and energy healing and I like to teach people on breathing. So we are going to kind of talk about the fundamentals of breath, the intentions behind intentional breathing, and then ways in which you can incorporate breathing with movement and with stillness. So Bethany, what are some of the ways that you incorporate intentional? Well, first, how do you define intentional breathing? So for me, intentional breathing, and it may differ with other people and other teachers, but for me, intentional breathing is taking the time to actually think about how you're going to breathe, counting your breath um, with the intention of either feeling better, having more clarity on something, uh, improving your life overall in some way. I have asthma, so I intentionally got into breathing, intentional breathing to help with asthma. So for me, it started off with counting uh, my breaths. How long do I breathe in? How long do I, do I breathe out? I'm um, being mindful not to be a mouth breather uh, because I, I was always a mouth breather. So for me, that's intentional. So what are ways that if people don't have something like asthma or another um, ailment that readily comes to their mind that they're diagnosed with or know of, how would intentional breathing benefit someone otherwise? Okay, so intentional breathing uh, gives your body more oxygen. Um, so sometimes we have low oxygen, don't even realize it. And some of the things that we may witness from low oxygen, headaches, foggy, fuzzy thinking, bad memory, um, anything uh, relating to uh, emotional issues, emotional stress, uh, intentional breathing can assist with that. You, you ever hear somebody say, well, if you get upset, count to 10. And when you're counting to 10, you, you might not be thinking about your breathing, but that gives you time to get your mind off of the situation. So that's the same thing breathing does, even in an instant. Uh, people with anxiety, uh, it's it's a miracle worker for people with anxiety because you take the time, you focus on that breath, you do that counting, and then whatever you are anxious about doesn't seem so big, it doesn't seem so overwhelming by the time you're done your exercise. Okay, so it can be helpful for some to bring someone's emotional state down. Mm -hmm. um, and Physically, with, with the blood, it helps oxygenate, oxen, I'm not saying the right word, but helps give more oxygen to, to your blood. So that helps with the blood flow in general. Okay, so it, it becomes of a, an emotional and then a mindful practice, and it can help get excess energy out of the body. Absolutely. Okay, wonderful. And then you had said something about it being a um, a way to increase more oxygen and more flow into your body. Mm -hmm. um, and I have heard the term life force energy. Mm -hmm. Can you explain? Is that a link to more oxygen, or is it, it is. Two separate concepts? It's it's the same. It's one and the same. It's definitely connected. And on a deeper level of teaching, uh, to get more oxygen into your blood assists with every organ, your, your heart, your lungs, uh, your muscles, your bones, everything is connected to the breath physically. And, uh, and in my opinion, everything is connected to the breath emotionally and spiritually too. That's one of the first things we learn about, you know, in religious texts. Most religious texts talk about something with the breath in the beginning of that text. Either the creator breathed life into something or, you know, that goes across many different religions, not just Christianity or Catholicism or Judaism. Um, many other historical texts talk about the importance of the breath. And I think it's a practice that's been forgotten and we're relearning. This is part of our, our relearning. Okay, so that would be the tie into life force energy. And that the oxygen, the oxygenation that you were referring to also links to moving the blood, the circulatory system around. So it's all interconnected, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Hmm, interesting. So that could really offset other forms of ailments or other concerns and conditions, even something like it could maybe offset heart disease or mm -hmm. arthrosclerosis, which is heart attack. Because right. if the more you breathe into the body, the better circulation your body may have. That's right. That's right. Can we talk about really the stress components now and how someone would benefit from it in a spirit-based sense or a spirit-based nature? How does that affect someone in their waking everyday life to breathe more? 
Because that's an opportunity to take time for yourself. Because you can do it anywhere. You can be in the bathroom. You can be in the car. Um, and it's like prayer. It can be like prayer. You just take that time for yourself. Take that time to love yourself. Take that time to count your breaths. Take that time to hold your breath. Very beneficial in holding your breath. Um, and all that does strengthen your lungs on a physical side. But on a spiritual side, that's your time to connect with your God, nature, yourself, the universe. Um, that's the perfect timing for a spiritual connection. Uh, so what I'm what I'm gathering in my mind is that it begins with the mindful intention, yes. and then after that is the acknowledgement. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know I said that, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that so wonderful. Um, I do my own fair share of intentional breathing, and I link it with uh, using something like a crystal. Mm. And it helps me because as far as sitting and stillness and carving out time mm -hmm. for me to connect with myself on a spiritual sense, sometimes I need a helper. And I consider crystals my helpers. Yeah. And I, I've been enjoying crystals ever since I was a teen. And I just recently, I would say during the last three to four years, have been uh, creating a system for myself to use them more effectively than just thinking that they're pretty objects. Right, right. They, again, they are my helpers. They are also my tools. Yeah. So I bought a few crystals and maybe you can help explain how to do some breathing exercises along with maybe holding something like a crystal. Um, is there some techniques where I can release and maybe um, put a little pressure and release? Or is there anything that you can guide me through while I work with a crystal? Sure. So like you said, it's a very good point. Um, when you breathe in, you want to, you can put pressure on the, uh, the crystal. And then when you breathe out, you can release. And then, yeah, yeah. And so then it's intentional on several levels. You're not only counting, you're not only paying attention to breath, but you're also showing love and honor to your crystal. And your crystal likes that. <laughs> yeah, it's getting, I don't want to say I'm using the crystal, I'm utilizing Absolutely. the vibration of the crystal, honoring the crystal that honors me back. That's right. I love that. And so just, just to... Um, Go over that one more time. Could you walk me through this? So the inhales with the with me holding and yeah. the exhales the releasing. Yes. Could you kind of I mean you, know, you, know, you can do you can do both depending on like we said what the intention is. Uh, because you can think of it as breathing in the energy from the crystal um or connecting with the crystal itself. But I think for each person it, it the importance of, is the intention. Okay. Okay. Okay, so you're not going to walk me through the exercise because we have a workshop coming up where we'll, we will be doing that, right? Yes. So um, let's talk about the date and time for that. So mm -hmm. on Saturday, March 26th, we are going to be doing a workshop called Crystals and Breathing. Um, it will be based upon Zoom. So you can gather your crystals and have them near you and you can select whatever crystal you want to utilize to work within certain breathing techniques. I will defer to Bethany in a little bit about the breathing techniques, but I want to focus on the crystals for just a second here. We are suggesting to utilize any crystal you would like. However, blue crystals are a wonderful way to connect with your throat energy center. The throat is where we start to work through respiratory. Well, honestly, it's the lungs, which are in the heart range, but we're gonna be focusing on blue because people often think about breathing as a throat kind of maneuver, but it's all ears, nose, and throat and heart too. So whatever crystal, but I will be utilizing a blue crystal. So gather your crystals on the 26th, join us for breathing with crystals or crystals and breathing. We haven't figured out the exact name yet. And um, Bethany is also going to highlight maybe three techniques that we'll be learning during this session. This session will be about 75 minutes, which is a little bit over an hour. So you'll get a good hour with us and about maybe 10 to 15 minutes of some questions. And we'll be here for you if you have any any comments or questions that you'd like to share with us. But Bethany, we'll be going over three different techniques. Are these techniques applicable to anyone? Can anyone and everyone do these breathing techniques? Do you need to be a meditator? Or like you, you don't have, have to be a meditator. Um, like, <clears throat> excuse me, for myself, there were some techniques 
that I had to, my lungs had to get strengthened to do. Uh, some of them, if you're breathing in for a longer period of time, if you're holding for a longer period of time, uh, but it's your lungs are a muscle. So you're just training your muscles. So you may not be able to breathe in for, you know, 10. You may only be able to breathe in for seven. You may only be able to breathe in for four. And you just adjust accordingly. Uh, again, the importance is intention, but you'll be expanding um, your your chest cavity, um, expanding your lungs and helping that that flow. But sometimes it takes time to get to those points. So we'll be doing techniques of time durations. And then is there any other techniques or any other tools that they'll need to assist themselves? I mentioned crystals bringing them. What are some other things to make the session comfortable for themselves? Um, you can utilize essential oils. Um, breathing in certain essential oils, having an oil diffuser like in the other corner of the room when you're doing your breathing exercises is very beneficial because then you get the emotional, uh, whatever emotional benefits, whatever oil you're using uh, or whatever physical, like I, I use one that's called breathe and, you know, for asthma stuff, it helps, you know, clear out the lungs, helps um, just make breathing a little bit easier, menthol and mint and stuff like that. So you can have something like an oil diffuser over in the corner just to help with your breathing, not a necessity. It's just something to add to the experience. What about water or anything like that? I mean, it's, they're going to get everything they need to know once you register, right? Yes. And this is a family-oriented session as well. If you have children that, you know, are having some anxiety issues, anxiety can start, you know, as young as the cradle. Mm -hmm. So if you've had a child that has had a series or even some symptoms of anxiety, breathing could be a wonderful technique yes. to calm and to bring their energy to a, a, a state of relaxation. Yes. And that's one of the other benefits, right? Absolutely. Relaxation. Absolutely. Yeah. So, <laughs> let's run it down again. We welcome you. We invite you to join us on Saturday, uh, March 26th. It will be a live Zoom a live virtual session at 2 p.m. for about 75 minutes. Uh, so we will pop up the link for you to register on uh, the Violets and Bloom website, and we hope to see you there. Bye for now. Bye. Breathe.